Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. A lot of you know that I have two aquariums with some DIY sumps on them, including this uh, 210 right here on my left. It has a 29 gallon sump on it that you can see here. Soon to be backed up by this Sun Sun 704B. And I also have a, uh, I also have a 300 gallon African cichlid tank that has a uh, 40 gallon breeder under here. And that 40 gallon breeder is uh, doing a great job. And it's backed up by a Fluval FX6. So the first, first thing I do when I uh, do a water change is first do just the general housekeeping. And in the case of the tank behind me here, which is the one I'll be focusing on in, in today's video, that starts with a, um, a cleaning of the glass, the front and side panels, and the plants if needed, and also a, um, a rinsing out of the sponge that is a pre-filter on the FX6 intake. I use these uh, Regugu re, re <laughs> cleaners. I think they do a good job. Uh, they come with a blade. I, I replaced the blade with this uh, plastic piece. So there's no chance of actually hitting a fish. These cichlids can be pretty curious and they can get, they can get right in front of it. And I don't want to cut one of, their, one of their eyes or something. Sometimes there's some, there are some hard to get spots like near the uh, substrate. You might want to use something like this might work a little better and uh, but for the most part this, this pretty much gets everything I want I did a review on these Regugu uh, cleaners you can see it in my product review playlist they do a, a pretty good job now the reason I do all of this sort of housekeeping ahead of time is because any particles that get released and are now floating in the tank are now going to get pulled out as part of the uh, water change. Not all of them. I mean, some of them are, some of them are, are certainly going to settle on the bottom, but a lot of them. And the, the more I can, the more gunk I can move out of here, the better. These Regugus do float. If they say, become separated, they do float. Makes them easy to get. And if you want to put a blade on them, you can. And uh, if, if you have a very, very difficult patch of algae, you can, you can use a blade uh, for that. Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and pull the sponge. Let's pull the sponge off of the back of the tank. This tank is 33 inches from front to back. Makes it a little bit difficult to grab things in the very back of the tank from the front, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, I can barely get it, okay. This is a uh, pre-filter I picked up from the aquarium, aquarium co-op, you can see it. I think it's their, I think it's their large, their large pre-filter and I'll give that a rinse and put it back in. Looks pretty messy in there, but it's going to clear up very, very quickly between the uh, sump and the FX6. And the truth is what I want is I want a lot of that water to actually go out of the tank along with the uh, particles that are floating. Now this tank is drained in a very, very unique way. I don't just run a hose. I don't just run a hose from the tank to a sink. I'll show you exactly what I, what I do to, uh, to drain this tank. You have to go around to the back of it. Let's unplug the two C-shaped pumps that are running the sump. Let's do that first. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock out these hoses. So there's no flow. And then unplug the FX6. Remember that tips video? I have little uh, bread clasps that tell me which plug is which. One of the worries that people have with sumps often is uh, 
flooding. And you'll see here how high the uh, tank gets when you unplug it. Gets to the top of that tape. It's about as far as it gets. So there's no chance that this tank is going to overflow because the amount of water I use is uh, carefully monitored. <laughs> so the way I drain this tank is I utilize the FX6 as just a giant siphoning system. Very, very simple. This is the in intake of the FX. This is the output of the FX6 and it's going to be uh, outputting, but it's not going to be outputting back to the tank. It's going to be outputting into uh, my backyard. And I went to Home Depot and I bought some clear hose. You can see here. And I bought one of these uh, end pieces. You can see the hose here. I just run this under the garage, under the garage door towards the uh, green area. And then all you do is you open up, open up the intake side and the water is going to come pouring out of the aquarium via the FX6. There it goes. That gives the tank a very fast drain. You can see the tank is already really cleared up just from the amount of filtration that ran in the time it took me to start draining with the FX6. I'm not doing large, enormous water changes like 80-90%. My test results don't show that that would be warranted. I get like zero nitrates out of my tap, so I just let the water run down say about 20% just to freshen the tank up, add some minerals, and all the other good stuff that occurs with a water change. Another thing I'll do from time to time when I do a water change is I'll clean or swap out any plants, any artificial plants that might be in the aquarium. This one's in really good shape, so I'm not going to bother. This tank doesn't get much, much algae at all, brown algae, it gets a little bit of it, but not much. Very often, I'll also turn over rocks. So I turn up a, you know, turn up a clean side and uh, put the side that has gathered any kind of discoloration or algae, make that side of the rock the facing down side, but I don't need to do that either. These rocks are actually looking, uh, they're looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna leave them alone for now. Maybe on the next water change, I'll go ahead and flip them. But it's just been a few minutes, and you can see my water level is is down. Uh, this is doesn't look like much, but on a 300 gallon tank with this kind of a footprint, that's a uh, you know, seven feet across. That, that's a big. That, that, that's a lot of water. But I'm gonna let it go down just a little bit more, and then I'll start the uh, the refilling process, which is actually the lo the longest, most arduous part of of the process, because I'm filling right from the tap, and the tap can only go so so fast. Before filling the tank, I'll add a little bit of SAFE. This is a, a Seachem product, Seachem product called SAFE. And it, uh, unlike uh, Fritz Complete or Seachem Prime, this comes in a powder form, a concentrated powder form. And for a, a 300 gallon tank, all you need is, is this right here. That's it. It's a quarter teaspoon, I believe. That's all you need for the uh, 300 gallon tank. So this, this goes a real long ways, very, very long ways, safe. I will also add to my African cichlid tanks, I do add uh, some of this cichlid, cichlid lake salt. And I'll put a heaping, uh, heaping tablespoon of this in there whenever I do a water change adds a few of the uh, 
trace minerals that are available in Lake Malawi and I feel it contributes to health and, and color and uh, well you can see in the fish these fish have had uh, Malawi lake salt ever since I got them. So the water level has dropped from here to about right here I'd say maybe uh, what do you think 20 percent 25 percent maybe and that's enough that's enough so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut down the FX6 and then reconnect it and then go ahead and start the filling process. I temperature match the water from the sink and add the uh, CCAM safe before I start the filling and so the water that's coming in is conditioned and it's actually uh, perfectly matched in temperature. You can see the water level here on the sump right at the uh, right getting into that blue tape. As soon as that water level bumps up to the top of the tape that's when I stop filling up the tank and I fire up the pumps at that point the water change is good to go. So you fill up the tank by monitoring the sump and that is the trick. Oh don't get me wrong you can certainly overflow a sump. You walk away you get distracted. First thing that will overflow is the sump itself the tank that's under your tank and depending on how fast your water is flowing if it overwhelms the uh, the weir where the uh, the cutouts in the back of the tank where the water is coming down then what will happen of course is your tank will also overflow. In all the years I've been uh, running sumps that did happen to me once. I walked away and uh, got involved in a conversation and then I could hear splashing and it is a very horrible feeling but you know that can happen when you're doing a regular water change on a tank without a sump. So uh, you certainly have to pay attention. The second that water line moves on that blue piece of tape I'm going to turn off the water from the faucet and I'll go ahead and uh, fire up that FX6. One of the nice things about this tank is that it has this black line at the top. You see this this black line near the top here? Just like on the 210 you have uh, a pretty big a, a thick white frame at the top and what that does it gives you a little bit of uh, of room to have a water line that is not exactly at the top. So the water line can be right at the bottom of the weir, right where the water goes into the sump, where it drains back into the sump in the very back of the tank. That's where your water line can be. That way there's a very little chance of running too much water down into the sump. So water has started to uh, pour into the sump from the tank. So now what I do is I plug in the pumps and that's essentially going to uh, top off the tank from the sump. You'll see the sump water levels start to drop as water starts to go into the tank. I also plugged in the FX6. And this is where you can fine tune your water level and continue to add water based on the exact height that you want your sump. This actually is a good amount, would be an amount in the sump that I would be confident that if the uh, power were to go out or the pumps were to be unplugged, the uh, sump aquarium would not overflow. So I've turned off the water, there's no more water going into the tank right now. And that's about the level the sump's going to run. Now during the week that level might drop maybe an inch or two, I'll go ahead and top it off directly into the sump giving the fish a little bit of uh, a freshening up of the aquarium. And then at the end of the week, I'll go ahead and do a water change like this one. So that's how I do a water change in an aquarium with a sump, and in this case, a sump and a canister. It's actually very easy, very simple, very straightforward. Nothing to worry about for those of you that are getting into sumps for the first time. 
It's uh, nothing real complicated. You just got to stay alert, keep your eye on things like you would with any water change, and just make sure that you don't uh, add more water than you need. Okay, so uh, any questions about that, just go ahead and ask them below, and I'll try and get to all of them. And if not, you can certainly ask me on Saturday during the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, please be sure to give the video a, uh, a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell. And consider becoming a monthly supporter by joining the Garage Gang and becoming a Patreon. Starts for as little as $3 a month. All the details are below the video. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for uh, stopping by, and I will see you next time.